This is Marshall Jones of Winthrop University, and we've been talking about uh, Rogers Diffusion and Adoption Theory. Uh, we just spent some time in the previous video talking about categories of innovativeness and what they mean. Um, and that uh, we concluded, or I concluded at least, that in theory that works great. Um, but in practice, sometimes things fall apart. Uh, I found this graphic uh, by Sue Waters uh, an interesting way of talking about the, um, the, the fusion and adoption process. Uh, from the previous video, you'll recognize the categories of innovators and early adopters, etc. cetera. Um, but the, uh, uh, what I want you to notice right now is, is I want you to notice what uh, uh, is referred to as the chasm. And that's this area right in here. And so, what the chasm is, is that point where something goes wrong. For example, you started a one-to-one -one program and you're supposed to start on October 1st and uh, you begin passing out devices and suddenly the network blows up. And the, uh, so things have been going great and then you've got a technical problem that slows everything down. The, the, so the chasm is that point where the adoption begins to, uh, uh, where the adoption process hits a, hits a wall. You can expect this in, in any implementation project. You can expect a time when the, um, when, when the whole process just slows down. And some t uh, now, so we know that's going to happen. So what we want to do is, is we want to make sure that we're doing as good a job as possible on the front end, trying to, trying to avoid some of the obvious problems. For example, if we're going to do a one-to-one -one computing initiative uh, with our school or our school district, and we know that we're going to be using devices like uh, an iPad or a Chromebook that rely heavily on wireless network, we want to make sure that we don't shoot ourselves in the foot by not having a robust enough wireless network to, uh, to, to handle all these new devices. So we can avoid the chat, one possible manifestation of the chasm by just doing a good front end analysis to figure out what are our potential problems before we get started. Rogers would tell us that, um, the, uh, that the diffusion and adoption process are about two basic components, adopters and time. Um, and Rogers provides the, uh, the S curve of adoption. And so what this S curve of adoption says is that, um, is that as time progresses, more people, um, adopt the, uh, more people will adopt the new innovation, the new idea, um, so that we can try to reduce the amount of time it takes to get uh, the, the most number of adopters. So the S-curve is going to show us that early in the process we have fewer people adopting and later we get more people adopting. Simple enough. Um, if we take the S-curve of adoption and we layer it um, over the categories of adoption, then what we can see is a better idea of sort of where those numbers tend to, to, to fall out. That we are trying to uh, get people as much as possible um, uh, sort of in this spot right here so that we can get more and more uh, uh, early majority people to adopt it. The idea is, is that we're trying to move people uh, as fast as we can. Um, we're trying to move people from this end to this end, is we want people adopting the technology as quickly as possible so that we can shrink the S-curve. So shrinking the S-curve uh, is means that, that we're going to spend less time in adoption and hopefully have more adopters uh, faster. What we're looking for is what's called critical mass. And critical mass in an adoption is that point in time where uh, enough individuals have come on board that uh, continued adoption is self-sustaining. Or put another way, um, it becomes impossible to do business without the innovation because everybody else is doing it. 
you consider the fax machine for just a moment. Um, uh, fax technology had been around since the 1950s, but uh, it wasn't until the 1980s that the business world found that it was pretty hard to do uh, business unless you had a fax machine. Now, I'm using the fax machine example because I'm old, but there's some. Um, but think about some other things that have uh, existed in your uh, in, in in your in your recent uh, memory, or maybe not recent memory. Um, consider the time to 50 million users from uh, uh, for some of these technologies. Uh, radio, um, 38 years for 50 million users. Television, 13 years. The internet, four years. Um, the, uh, and you can sort of see the sort of exponential growth that's happened with technologies uh, over time. So when we think about critical mass or so we, we have sort of a self-sustaining adoption um, so that things are just going to, they're going to continue on um, within the adoption process without us having to do much anymore, um, what we're looking at is putting that critical mass on the S-curve so that we have, um, uh, so that we're looking at sort of this notion right here. So we've reached a point where uh, we've got this late diffusion happening and more and more and people are continuing to uh, to buy into the buy into the process. So when we talk about planning for the use of a new innovation within an organization, our goal is to get that innovation up and running as quickly as possible. Uh, we want to shrink the S curve, meaning that we want the time to uh, we want to spend less time do it, doing it. Um, we want to do it as efficiently as possible with the fewest amount of resources possible. Particularly if you're working in an educational institution, you don't, you don't have limitless resources. Um, the, uh, and we want to do it effectively so that everything is working the way that it was intended to work. And one of the ways that we do this is by doing our careful front-end analyses so that, our, so that we can identify as many of the potential problems before they actually happen so the uh, so that we can avoid if at all possible the chasm where the innovation begins to slow down and fall apart so that concludes our uh, overview of rogers theory of diffusion and adoption